सो वॉट इज प्लांट ब्रीडिंग प्लांट ब्रीडिंग इज एक्चुअली मेथड्स विच आर यूज इन क्रॉप इम्प्रूवमेंट सो द इम्प्रूवमेंट ऑफ क्रॉप रेफर्स टू इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मैनी डिजायरेबल कैरेक्टर्स इन अ सिंगल स्पीशीज विच इज देन मल्टीप्लाइड ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल फॉर सप्लाइंग टू द फार्मर्स ग्रोअर्स और प्लांटर्स एंड इट इज अचीव्ड बाय स्पेशलाइज टेक्निक्स ऑफ प्लांट ब्रीडिंग बेस्ड ऑन नॉलेज ऑफ जेनेटिक्स द क्रॉप इम्प्रूवमेंट डिपेंड्स ऑन फेवरेबल इन्वायरमेंट लाइक गुड इरीगेशन बेटर फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड प्रिकॉशंस टू एवॉइड लॉसेज ड्यू टू डिजीजेस together with superior hereditary characters so in uh, crop improvement methods there are many parts and the first part is pl- plant introduction which includes primary introduction and secondary introduction second is plant selection and there are three kinds of plant selection mass selection pure line selection and clonal selection third uh, point is hybridization uh, where the desirable plants are hybridized to get progeny for better yield and vigor so the fourth is called wet heterosis or hybrid vigor so we will be discussing all these points one by one in subsequent slides what is plant introduction we have uh, already discussed that uh plant introduction is uh when a plant is introduced from one place to another so um, plant in- introduction means introducing a plant having desirable characters like high yield disease resistance vigorous growth from a region or a country where it grows naturally to a region or a country where it did not occur uh, earlier and it is very important part of agriculture uh, agricultural development throughout the world so plant introduction can be primary introduction or secondary introduction so what is primary introduction primary introduction is when the introduced crop or variety is well suited to the new environment and it is directly grown or cultivated without any alteration in the original genotype so what is primary introduction when the new when the plant is introduced from one place to another and it does not require any alteration now what is secondary introduction the introduced variety when it is not acclimatized in the new environment so it is altered so the introduced variety may be subjected to selection to isolate a superior variety or it may be used in hybridization program to transfer some useful traits so this is the difference between primary introduction and secondary introduction then what are the merits of plant introduction uh, when a plant is introduced in a area it provides new species in that area this is the first point then plant introduction helps in genetic improvement because when a new species is uh, introduced it can be utilized as a parent uh for hybridization purpose third point is that introduction of new plants enhances biodiversity but along with merits there are some demerits like when we introduce one plant uh from one place to another it can also instead of becoming a new crop species it becomes a weed like for example argimon mexicana iconia parthenia lantana camera these are some examples which were introduced from some places in india and then they are uh, now uh, uh, these plants have become weeds now it can introduce new diseases uh, like late blight of potato from europe and bunchy top of banana from sri lanka came to our country uh, so uh, the third demerit is that it can also introduce new pests like potato tuber moth came from italy so these are some de- demerits of plant introduction now the second uh, m- method of plant plant improvement is plant selection and it refers to selecting an economic plant 
having desirable characters from a given population of plants based on its phenotypic characters. So there are three kinds of plant introduction and we will be discussing those uh, um, one by one. So first is mass selection. Mass selection is, uh, it is practiced in cross pollinated species and the first step involves selecting plant having desirable characters from a given population of plants based on phenotypic characters and then the seeds of selected plants are mixed and sown in the same field so this is called mix, mixed cropping uh, this is done to uh, allow natural cross pollination the second kind of selection is pure line selection which is practiced in naturally self pollinated crops and the step involves selection of few plants uh, each having one or more desirable characters and then each of the selected plants is self through several generations to attain homozygosity the homozygous plants thus obtained are multiplied and these are known as pure lines the pure lines are, are then crossed uh, to introduce several desirable characters in a single progeny which is then multiplied and supplied to farmers for cultivation so pure line selection is better compared to mass selection because here the plants which are formed they retain the desirable characters for several generations however uh, it is uh, disadvantageous in the terms that it, requ it requires more time than mass selection now the third kind is clonal selection the clonal selection is practiced in vegetatively propagated plants and uh, this involves the selection of plant from a population of crops based on phenotypic characters and then it is multiplied vegetatively and supplied to the farmers for cultivation so a population of plants raised from uh, a single vegetatively propagated plant is called a clone so these are the three kinds of selection which we have discussed in plant selection. Now, the third uh, technique is hybridization, uh, which involves uh, the technique of introducing characters of two or more desirable species into one so that a synthetic hybrid is made by the process of artificial pollination. Now, this process involves two uh, emasculation process where uh, if the two plants are bisexual flower, have uh, bisexual flowers, the stamens of female parent are then removed by the process of emasculation, which is the uh, emasculation is the sub process of removal of uh, anthers or uh, the male reproductive part uh, from a bisexual flower, so that artificial cross pollination can be done, and to avoid contamination by unwanted plant. Uh, by unwanted pollen the female uh, and the male flowers are covered with cellophane paper bags which and this process is called bags the bags are opened at the time when the act of cross pollination is to be performed so that the cross pollination is done and then after cross pollination it the bagging is done again so uh, <coughs> this is the third step in methods of crop improvement here you can see some pictures where you can see that these three pictures are showing the process of emasculation in three different plants where the anthers are being removed and this process is called emasculation. This is the picture of bagging where you can see that the anthers have been removed and the plant is bagged so that pollination can be done after some time now this is the process of tagging where you can see that the plants are tagged after the bagging process where the date of emasculation the name of the plants is written now uh, once the hybridization is done after the hybridization when we uh, uh, get the progeny so heterosis or hybrid vigor is a pro is refers to exhibition of superiority by hybrid over both the parents 
so if the progeny is giving more yield or more vigor than both the parents we say that it has hybrid vigor or the process of heterosis has been obtained so the vigorosity of the hybrid is determined based on the ability to give higher yield disease resistance and pest resistance etc so the heterosis normally involves two steps the plants are selected from certain desirable character self repeatedly through several generations to pure lines and then they are hybridized to get the heterotic effect heterosis is of great significance in plants uh, which can be vegetatively propagated like sugarcane mango apple guava etc in these plants heterotic hybrid retain their desirable characters and indefinitely because there is no chance of segregation as they are ve multiplied vegetatively now here you can see uh, the whole process uh, of all the methods of plant Im uh, improvement step by step so here you can see that in the first picture emasculation is taking place which where we are removing the anthers and uh, then in the second picture you can see bagging is taking place in third picture you can see that tagging is taking place and in fourth picture you can see that after emasculation bagging and tagging this is a bag again plant there are some pictures been of bagging tagging and here uh, these are different plants like lily royo and hibiscus now here you can see how the students are doing these experiments in field so these are students at work and here you can we will discuss some examples where this hybridization process how the hybridization process has taken um, resulted in on uh, the uh, in uh, in the evolution of some new species for example you can see here that how triticum estivum uh, which is your hexaploid wheat evolved from uh, different species of triticum like triticum monococcum which is a diploid species when it uh, hybridized with agelops peltoides it gave uh, uh, to a sterile hybrid which after polyploidy or chromosome doubling uh, resulted in agelops squarosa which hybridized with triticum durum and then uh, a hexaploid species of uh, wheat which is triticum estivum it, it, it was obtained by chromosome doubling so we have already discussed this example in uh, numerical changes of uh, chromosomes when we were discussing polyploidy and this is another example where you can see that brassica campestris when it hybridized with brassica nigra it gave rise to diploid sterile uh, hybrid and then chromosome doubling took place it gave rise to brassica juncia which is a tetraploid brassica species so we have already discussed all these examples and i hope uh, you know all these examples more than this we have discussed in polyploidy in numerical changes of chromosomes so you can read or refer those video lectures and notes and uh, you can also refer books to understand this topic better so students uh, i hope you have understood it and thank you.